I'm looking at this bear making his way up the hill and my guess he's probably looking for a good berry patch and I think he's probably found some berries. The neat thing about this area is there's both blueberries and soap berries in here. Just by how he's moving I could get a pretty good idea of which one it is that he's eaten. But based on where he is, I would bet he's eaten blueberries. My name is Pat Owen, and I'm a wildlife biologist at Denali National Park and Preserve in Alaska. I think it's really important for us to be able to have places where things really function as part of a natural system. And Bears are just one piece in that part of a natural system. I, I really believe that there are places in the United States where bears used to be and they can't be anymore and they will never belong again. And, and I don't think that we should try to make them belong there. But I think that there are plenty of places that they do or that they can again. And I think it's just an appreciation for the rest of life that's out there. It's actually very low density. If you look at bears across Alaska, you know, the densities go from probably about 25 bears per thousand square kilometers up to a couple hundred bears. All the part of Denali National Park and Preserve that's north of the Alaska Range, um, inside our park boundaries, we're figuring at most probably 350 bears. There's obviously enough to sustain a population, but not at levels like something you would find along the coast where bears are eating fish and they get lots more to eat. We talk about bears being omnivores, that they basically eat whatever is edible that they happen to come upon. They're meat eaters at certain times of the year more than others, but generally bears in interior Alaska eat a lot of vegetation and you know they're eating early green shoots in the spring, they're digging up roots and tubers. At this time of year, right about now, the berries are starting to get ripe and they're heavily into eating blueberries, soap berries, whatever other kind of berries they can find. Okay, you see the way that bear's head is moving? Just taking bites and kind of bobbing? That's blueberry feeding behavior. They focus on caribou and moose calves in May. Pretty much all the rest of the year, unless they either happen upon a carcass of a moose or a caribou or a sheep or anything else, or a lot of times what'll happen is if wolves make a kill, a bear will take it over. Other than that, they don't really spend a lot of time trying to take down adult ungulates. So most of the year they are not eating meat. They're eating vegetation. That doesn't provide the sustenance that a protein meal does. So it's a little tougher life here for bears than other places. So at this time of year, when all the berries are ripe, bears go into something called hyperphagia, which means that they are eating pretty much every waking moment. Their goal is to pack on weight. You probably saw the closure that was down here on the East Fork yeah. a couple of days ago for that caribou kill. Wolves killed the caribou, bears moved in on it. You know, we don't want people getting in there. Yeah, right. You know, it, you know, there's yeah. those bears, oh yeah. We're just on the buzz and um, we saw down the river, we saw a grizzly bear um, feeding on the leftovers of a carcass. Apparently the, a couple of days ago, wolves killed the caribou and the bear was just eating leftovers. This was a really neat example of what usually happens here. Most times if we've got bears feeding on adult ungulates, they haven't made the kill. They've taken the kill yeah. from wolves. And that's exactly what happened down here. The wolves killed it. About six hours later a bear moved in 
and then a little bit after that, a bigger bear moved in, right. and apparently there was quite a fight oh, between yeah. the two I heard bears. The wolves came back too. And yeah, the, and there was at on the one butt. time up to four <laughs> bears down there. The wolves running around. You know, there's ravens and magpies, and it's yeah. just a party. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he buried the carcass. The bear buried the carcass, like to feed on it later on, so he might still be be around there. I've seen them do it a lot of times, but they'll cover it up and they'll basically lay on top of it or yeah, lay so next to it somewhere. Sleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when they want it, you know, they'll sleep for a couple hours and then they'll get up and they'll uncover it a little bit and they'll get a meal off of it and cover it right back up and camp out on top of it again until it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've had one bear here, a radio collar bear in our study that died at the age of 34. And I haven't checked it in a little while, but the last time I checked the state record for the age of a bear, their oldest record was 35. That's awesome. Oh, he's a bruiser. In, in a system like what we have here at Denali, they are part of a natural system. And if you take bears out of the equation, things would be very different here but you know on the flip side of that who knows where we're going to be in you know another couple hundred years with climate change and we're documenting changes that are happening here that have been happening here since the beginning of this park and you know who knows where we're going to end up